my wife had shoulder surgery yeah doctor said I probably have to take care of her for about a week yeah I brought her home I put her on the couch and I got her a pillow made her comfortable I thought I'd sit down on the couch yeah honey can you get me a blanket kind of cold yeah sit back down honey can you get me something to drink with some ice yeah sit back down honey my feet are cold can you get me some slippers yeah sit back down honey I'm getting kind of hungry can you get me a snack yeah honey I think I gotta go to the bathroom no you got to take care of that yourself figure that one out on your own this has been going on for a week and she's left-handed and had left left uh, shoulder surgery she can't do nothing <laughs> I gotta do it all okay yes it's true she had say this fast three times shoulder surgery yes uh, and I haven't been able to get in here for almost a week to work on this model it, it, you know uh, finally one day <clears throat> about four or five days later I said uh, <clears throat> she asked for a pain pill because the little incisions and stuff were hurting her so I said well why don't you take two maybe to relax you and you can get a little sleep yeah that knocked her ass out for a while so I managed to slip in here and uh, I got started on my weathering. Uh, one of the reasons I bought this sub is because I've seen so many guys on YouTube do them German subs and they weathered them real good and, and they looked all wore out and that's what I wanted to do. I, I had some fun doing some of that weathering on my uh, Arizona and my Dresden. I thought, boy, I'm going to get me something that I can really go crazy with this weathering. And I figured, well, sub is about the best thing. They, you know, they get beat up out there in that ocean. Uh, they're out there for months at a time on patrol. Don't get in to, you know, to clean up the ship or anything. So I thought, well, that's what, you know, that, this would be a good lesson for doing some heavy-duty weathering. And I know this is going to be a long video, but, you know, to show you the process I go through and what I do, you know, it's it, I'd rather put it in one video than split it up. So uh, let's go ahead, because like I said, this is going to be long, so we're going to cut this little chit-chat short, because I don't know when she's going to get back up. <laughs> and I want to get on get on some of this wedding, so I'm going to show you what I've been up to and, and, and things I've done. Alright, so here we go. Okay, so it's time to uh, start my weathering. Um, I like to use oils. Uh, number one because my wife has got a very large uh, variety in colors and 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 styles and stuff different uh, brands so I use oils I, I've had good results with them I like using them and like I said I've got the availability of them so uh, so here's the ones I picked I got titanium white lamp black Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce them, but two shades of blue. I'm not sure I'll be using these, but I, I've, I've got an idea for them, but I don't know if I'll use them or not. Uh, oils are a little messy. <laughs> these have been sitting in a, a baggie, a plastic bag that my wife had she's got a bunch of them in there and no matter how tight you think you got that top them oils will seep out and then they get all sticky now I wiped down the tubes with some uh, lacquer thinner uh, but yeah they're kind of nasty 
but I, I like them. I, I had good results using them. Uh, I probably will use some chalk here and there, but this is my preferred medium. And like I said, my preferred medium. This isn't what you have to do, it's just what I like to do. And for thinning down or cleaning up, uh, I like to use this turpenoid. Okay, I have good results with that. Seen a couple guys use it on the uh, on YouTube, and uh, yeah, I like it. It's, it says it's odorless, and it's a turpentine substitute. Um, if you might have watched a couple of my videos on something else a while back, uh, I was using mineral spirits, I think it was, or something, and boy, that took forever to dry. This dries fairly fast. Now for oils, when you say fairly fast, <laughs> that could be a couple days you know but you do want to give it a chance to dry out and I'm going to show you something here uh, a little trick I learned and, I, and I'll show you what I'm talking about it's it's the oils in this stuff that slows down the the drying process it, you know to try and get that oil to evaporate to a certain you know uh, when my wife uses these on a canvas it might take couple weeks for these things to dry to where you can put another coat of another color on it. But I'm going to show you something here and it's going to take a little while to uh, develop. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of these on this piece of cardboard. I got a piece of cardboard here and we're going to put some of these on here if I can get it out. These have been sitting for a while. See what I mean about being sticky? <laughs> they get kind of nasty. Alright. There we go. There's some of my white. And I think what I'm going to try and do to keep this from happening so much is try and clean this off as I do them. And there's one of the problems you got. I'm trying to tighten that lid up and it just keeps spinning. It gets to a certain point, then spins. And that's why they leak so bad. Uh, not the best setup. Oh, I'm going to have to open that one up. That one's not even been opened. I'll get to that in a second. Let me see about this other one here. Yeah, that's been opened. Now this is way, way more than I'll need, you know, but uh, I'm just getting something on here. So I want to show you what will happen. Let me clean this one off. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen artists before, but they are not the cleanest people when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, there's another one. You, you get to a certain point and it just keeps turning the lid. They're not sealing up. Uh, what do I got here? I got those. I got black. I got to open that one up yet. Here's my uh, one shade of my blue. And, and I say this blue, you're thinking, what do, what do I want blue for to try and make rust? I've seen pictures of rust where there is a blue tinge to it in certain spots. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Let me open this one up. I don't think this one's ever been open. Um, where you will see a, a slight blue tinge to it, you know. Not a whole lot. It's I think it's more probably this shade of blue right here that's showing up for you uh, than the darker one. I'm cleaning my tubes off. But uh, yeah, you know, the, when you really get down and look at rust, there's a lot of colors in there. And I need my burnt sienna to be open. Let's open this one up. So 
So, uh, you know, and why so many colors? Well, because you can mix a couple of these together and get different shades of rust. And uh, that's, that's why I'm just, you know, grabbing a bunch of colors. I should have a little red here. And uh, so I'll probably add a, another one here. I'll probably get some red. Um, and try and make or look and see if I got some orange. But I think that, you know, that's a good start. But what, I, what I'm getting at is I'm going to leave this set. We'll come back in, a, in, I don't know, a couple hours, maybe uh, six hours. And I'm going to show you what, what is going to happen here. All right. What I hope is going to happen. It depends on the uh, oils, I guess. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, we're going to do a little experiment here. We'll be back in a, in a while. Okay. Uh, this is about six, maybe eight hours later. <clears throat> I left these paints set on this piece of cardboard. And if you can see around the edges there, oh my god, I lost my pointer. Hold on. Oh, the day's almost over. Here it is. Um, you can see around the edges how that oil has leached out of the of the paints and uh, there you can even see it on the back where it's soaked through so if you let that set for a little while to help get some of that oil out of there and the more oil you get out the you know a little bit faster it'll dry uh, you don't have to do this um, you know you can put these oils on just like they were when I, I put them on there and uh, it, it just might take a, a another day for it to dry you know there's no no need in getting in a hurry with these oils because they do take a while to dry but uh, you know I just wanted to show you this and, and show you uh, you know what's in these in, in these uh, oil paints there's a there's a lot of oil based solvents or whatever in there and if you let them leach out a little bit uh, stuff will, uh, will dry a little bit better for you now uh, in all honesty um, this is about two days later but it took about six to eight hours to get to this point but this is about two or, or three days later after I originally done this because I, I got things going on but you know I can touch this paint and uh, peel it back a little bit and get into the inside of it and uh, it's still still ready to go you know a little dry on the outside where the air's been hitting it but uh, you know in about a week this this would pretty much dry up and be useless I think but uh, you know it's still manageable I can still use some of it uh, and pretty much uh, this was a waste for what I need for my model you know I didn't need nearly none of this and uh, you know maybe a quarter of what I got there in some of these colors is all you know I probably wouldn't even use that much but I just wanted to do this as a demonstration to show you uh, if you're going to use oils what to look for you know kind of kind of let it sit for a little while and let some of that oil leach out and uh, it, it you know it'll help it dry faster and like I said this uh, <clears throat> this terpenoid, it's also, you know, kind of a fast drying, uh, thinner or reducer, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's it for this. Let's get on to, uh, on to uh, doing some weathering on the ship. Okay, so here's my sub. Um, let me show you what I got here. I got a little container here my terpenoid in it I've got some of these hard tipped um, q-tips they're real solid they don't come apart very easy I've got a bunch of these soft q-tips okay and those things unravel real, real easy so you better have a bunch of these um, I've got a very fine brush 
because I'm working in small detail and I took my my oils like I showed you and I took my little spatula here and I just spread them out a little bit bust off I, like kind of took back the top layer because it was kind of crusting up and got to the center of it where it's still nice and uh, pliable and, and ready to use and like I said that's been sitting for about two days okay so uh, what I like to do is basically I'm just using these two colors right here uh, let me see what those two were okay I wasn't sure but I wanted to make sure uh, yellow ochre and burnt sienna those are the two uh, colors I pretty much use for rust now I don't blend them together anywhere here on the palette I blend them on the model itself and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, but these two colors are the two I'm using the most and I am using some white um, the rest of them are you know you never know you know you might want to try and blend a couple together you know red and yellow make orange and you'll get a little bit of that color which is is not a bad looking color of rust I'm, I might go with a little bit of that added in here and there alright so and you notice I'm wearing a glove alright because I'm to the point now where I don't want to be getting fingerprints on this thing I want to try and keep it as clean as possible alright so we're going to start up here in the bow um, up around this area around all these limber holes okay so what I like to do is I will take this little fine brush and dip it into one of these colors here just get a little bit on the tip okay don't need a lot because this stuff goes a long ways you will be taking off most of it now there's just a little bit on there and I don't think it's going to show up then I'll dip it in my turpinoid here and I will come up here let's start way up here I'll come up here and I'll make a couple little streaks here okay and you can see I got so much turpinoid in there that this stuff is flowing out pretty good but that's alright we can clean it up alright we're just going to put some like rust around the bottoms of these uh, limber holes up here okay we'll try and get them all because I believe these were the worst don't worry about you know trying to be really perfect here because I'll show you what we're going to do we'll be cleaning up a lot of this and see what I mean about a lot of a little bit of this going a long ways okay that's good enough and we're going to take and get me a spare rag here clean this brush out a little bit wipe it off on here get the rest of that out of there all right then we're going to go with this other color this here yeah, I don't have enough room here to do all this so I'm in there too close I'm going to go with this uh, burnt sienna here and once again just going to get a little bit of it on the tip of that brush I got to dig around in here find me a nice soft spot alright we're going to come right back to where I was at where I started at right up here and we're just going to put a little bit of that here and there I believe I need a little bit more let me get some more here okay and we're just going to put a few spots of that right over the top of that yellow or I'm sorry the uh, yellow ochre and that's what I mean we're, we're blending here on top of what I got okay don't need a lot just basically putting little dots and dashes here and there 
And I'll bring this up to you and show you here in a second. Let me get this on here. Alright. Let me clean this brush out. Get that color off. Now, let me see if I can bring this up if you can see any of that. Now, it doesn't look like much. Not yet. Because we're going to streak it down. We're going to bring these, these little dabs of paint and we're going to bring them down. So I'm going to dip this little brush here again into a little bit of turpenoid and get the excess off. And we're going to come back and we're going to start pulling it down. And this is hard for me to do this way. We're just going to start pulling some of these colors down, streaking it down. Okay. A little more turpenoid. Take off the excess. Start pulling down on this stuff. Streaking it down like it, you know, gravity's doing its thing, pulling it down. Alright, this is uh, a little time consuming, but you know, there's a, there's a few steps to this to get this to look right. And if you could see, what I'm seeing is by doing them two different colors and mixing them on here, I've got streaks that are blending together in two different shades. Okay. And it's, you know, it's kind of messy right now. It's, you know, the streaks are a lot bigger and farther apart part than these little limbo holes are but I'll show you what we do and how we're going to straighten some of this out I just keep dipping that brush in that turpenoid and getting this stuff reactivating it more or less okay and, and I'm just pulling down all right uh, if you can see that uh, you can see how I pulled it down now, okay, I want to keep this within the limber holes, all right? And uh, where's it at? I got one here, right here. I got one right here where the space in between the limber holes has got some of that color in it. So I want to get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to dip this little hard tip brush in there, wipe off the excess, and go in there and rub that out. Okay, rub it out of there. And then I'll come in with one of my soft tips and just drag it on down. And that just got rid of that little spot that was in between them two limber holes where there should be no rust. Okay, so I'm going to work on this a little bit here, cleaning it up. Here's another one. I got some in between the limber holes. I don't want that rust there. Rub it out of there with this uh, little hard Q-tip and then come along with the soft one and, and just drag down and get rid of it. Okay. There's another one that's a little bit too heavy on the edge. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. you got to think about perspective in this. Um, you know, you don't want these streaks getting out of hand. You want to keep them within the size of these limber holes and fairly thin because in reality, you know, I don't know what it is, a, you know, a millimeter wide uh, streak is six inches in real life or whatever. So you want to kind of, you know, get in there and keep it as with within its boundaries I should say 
Here again, I'm going in between the two limber holes because I had some in there. Come along with the other Q-tip, clean it up. Okay, I'm seeing another one here. Okay. So you can see I'm starting to clean it up and getting it to stay within them limber holes and, and running down. Just streaking it down. Alright, then I take a look at it and I can see, let me uh, streak this one down a little bit further here. This turpenoid will, you know, bring it back to life every time you touch it. And allow you to do more and more with it. And we are working in such a you know a small area here. You know it, it doesn't take a lot. <coughs> so um, let me go ahead and, and finish up some more of these little holes and limber holes, and, uh, and then we'll come back. Alright, I'm zoomed in a little bit here, and this is going to be a little hard to do, but I'm zoomed in a little bit here to try and give you a little bit better idea of what I'm doing. Let me see if I can get up to the front of that bow. Right there. Alright, I already went ahead and put some uh, yellow ochre on there. Okay, now I got the burnt sienna. And I'm just dipping into this, and I'm just coming along and just putting little dabs there. Okay, don't take a whole lot. Just a couple little dabs of this around the bottom of these openings because that's where the rust is going to be coming out. Okay, get a little bit more on here. Just put little dabs on there. That's what I mean. I'm mixing the two colors together right on the ship. So that when I come along here, okay, let me clean this brush. So that when I come along here with a little bit of this turpentine or turpenoid here and just start pulling down. I'm going to pull down on these two colors I got, a little bit more turpenoid. And streak these colors out. Okay, and then you can see, well you probably can't see it, but those two colors now are blending together and giving you different streaks of each color, you know. There's, there's streaks of yellow ochre and streaks of burnt sienna that look as one, if you understand what I mean. Alright, now like I said, let me clean my brush. Looks a little kind of nasty there in, in spots. Let me get one of these Q-tips here. Let me get myself situated. I got one of these and one of these. And there's, I can see it's still wet. So I'm just going to come in here and clean this up a little bit in between these. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Wipe it off of there. Something already on there. You gotta watch this stuff, it gets around. Alright, I can see this one is on the outside. I don't want it out there. So I'll get it wet, scrub it, come along, wipe down, and that cleaned that up. Okay. Let's clean up this front here a little bit. I got outside the lines. <coughs> and you can use this also to help streak it down a little bit further if you feel that's what you need. And I do. And then you can just come along and pat that. OK. 
okay and that will take most of that wetness out of it. Now I'm going to take this uh, little brush here and up on the bow I figure this bow has been taking a beating okay I'm going to just get me a little bit of paint on there and I'm just going to stipple it you know stipple it up here I'm just staying within this uh, haze gray color okay and I'm going to give it the effect that this bow is taking a beating and um, been pretty well chipped and weathered you know they probably run into uh, reefs coral reefs or something on a mission where they've got to get in close and uh, you know just the wave action itself causes this bow to take a beating boy and I'm just barely putting just touching it you know I don't want to have a big glob of it there just to give the fact that this front is got some chips in it and stuff okay so let me see if I can get that up there to you show that and I got this piece of wire here because that's how I'm painting it I'm holding on to that okay now there's some more I want to do to it here and there but I'm not going to bug you to death with uh, with me doing all this but I am going to show you what I'm going to do in the back here um, this black it it's a different type of paint I would imagine uh, kind of got something in it probably to help from uh, corrosion from the seawater because it's in the water all the time so your rust streaks when it gets onto the black it's not rust color anymore it's more of a hazy white okay so I'll show you what I'm gonna do there I am just gonna go ahead and dip right into my white okay right there and for this I'm going to use a little bit wider brush okay I'm going to go with, with this one here as I got a much bigger area I want to clean this brush out a little bit okay and uh, you know I've seen guys do this differently I've seen guys take their paint and put little dabs of it here and there and then come back along and pull through it to streak it I found I get better results if I just go ahead and dip a little bit of oil on my brush that turpenoid and just go ahead and take my white and get back here and now I'm going after this area that's underneath the gray right here there's an opening where the water comes out okay and that's what I'm going after now I'm not going after anything real heavy duty to get you in view I just want to do something subtle okay now like I said it's gonna start out looking like crap okay but we're gonna straighten all this up got a lot of oil in it right now that's why it's uh, you're thinking oh man he just ruined his model um, there's a lot of oil in this that's why it's running so much I should have got some of that oil out of that brush but we don't want this too heavy let me get some oil on there now and we're just making streaks down along the side of this boat here and you're thinking well that ain't streaks that's a mess I don't know if I'm in view here or not we're gonna take this up pretty far we're gonna take it all the way up to where it it meets right here and it, this opening ends okay all right now we're gonna come back as it's starting to dry a little bit put some more start streaking it out a little bit wipe it off wipe off that excess oil 
come in here and start streaking it. Get that brush clean. Alright, we're still, let me clean this brush a little bit, get that oil out of there. I want this, I, this is way too much. I'm just going to, I'm going to be working on this to get this to really settle down and be real subtle. I don't want this to stand out like a sore thumb because it wouldn't. But you see, if I dip that in the oil, because this is starting to dry on there, I can wipe it away. I can wipe away what I don't want. Okay. And uh, I know I've got a little dead air time in here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on this. We'll put you on pause and we'll come back. But I'm just going to keep doing this until I get it the way I like it. Okay, so here I'm back. Um, I pretty much got her finished out the way I like it. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I put a little bit too much white on there when I was starting out. But I just had to sit here. And uh, between a brush uh, with a little bit of turpenoid on it, going down, cleaning it up, then coming back with one of these Q-tips and, and cleaning it up, getting it off, coming back with one of these. I, I just, you know, it took a while to get it off, to get it to where I just wanted it to be kind of subtle. And if you can see that, what I started out with and what I got now, it's pretty subtle. Now I did go ahead and take it all the way up to the bow. I figure, you know, this this rust coming down off up here, it's just not going to stop at that line and, and that's it. It's going to go on down and it's going to discolor this black. But like I said, uh, the reaction between that rust and, and this color here, which has probably got some type of anti-fouling uh, stuff in it, it changes to me it changes color it goes to more of a uh, milky white you know and leaves that color a streak so that's what I did up here you know and you can see I don't know if I showed it to you the bow how I weathered this up in here here's the other side now I got that weathered up around in there uh, weathered around the anchor so um, yeah I'm pretty much satisfied with it I, I got a little bit more maybe I want to do here and there but um, it's getting there it, it's just about done on the weathering I, but that's my basics that's you know and that's using my oils uh, like I said, it, it, it's so much easier to control, you, you know, this is probably, actually this is probably on this side a couple days later, and I could come back in here with this turpenoid and start working that, and I could, I could wipe that off if I wanted to, you know. Uh, so, I got a little bit more to finish up here, and then we're going to get to them stanchions, and, uh, Get my fair waters on there. I've been working on that too. Okay. Getting that dirtied up. See if I can turn this side of it around. Okay. So there we go. Um, you know these these sailors out at sea didn't have a whole lot of opportunity to try and keep their sheep ship clean. Sheep ship clean uh, you know you're either on the surface and got a lot of water flowing across the surface of this vessel or 
you're underwater and there ain't nobody going out there to clean it then. So, yes, you know, a, a few months at sea and I think she's going, you know, that salt water is going to eat her up. Anybody that's ever had a boat, you know, and I had one for a while and you got that teak wood on there. <laughs> You know, I, we live down here by the Ohio River, so there's no salt water, but just the sun alone beating on that teak wood would fade it out. Every year you got to go in there and sand it and re-oil it. Uh, so I can't imagine what salt water would do to uh, this wooden deck and, and this steel ship. The salt, the spray, uh, the sun beating on it, you know. And then again, like I said, she was probably... Uh, running the ground here and there, you know, on them secret missions where you got to rescue somebody, you know. So, uh, all right, I think uh, that video is long enough. Uh, we'll call this one quits. And uh, I think next one we'll be back into. I'll have my fair water on and start getting my stanchions on it and uh, get my easy line on there. And this thing's going to be about done. Okay, that's it for this one. Gary, can you come here for a minute? Yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there.